this, Lord, I'd like to say a quick prayer. Lord God, thank you that you're with us. Thank you that we can worship you. Thank you that you're in this building with us, Lord. I ask that the worship that we do for you, the music that we make, will be a sweet fragrance to you. I pray that in your name. Jesus is not
afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Great that you're here to uh, worship together and remember the death and the resurrection of Christ. Um, and also a very warm welcome to anyone who is here for the first time. If you are here for the first time, we have a small gift for you. Please raise your hand so we can give it to you. I see some people over there. Oh, that's too loud. Thank you for coming. Over there. No new people here? Okay, good. Okay, there's a, um, a welcome card on the package that you just received. If you would like to fill that out and after the service give it, uh, service give it to me or leave it on the information table that is um, in the back where we will also have coffee. Uh, we would be very grateful. We hope that you have a blessed service together with us. Um, let me see, welcome. Then for all the parents who have children, there is a children's church uh, right after the worship uh, for uh, all children uh, 4 to 12, for children um, 0 to 3 years old. Uh, if you cannot have them here, um, in the back here, there is a room where you can look after your children and you should be able to uh, follow the sermon from there. Although we have some troubles. I think we have a workaround now, right? Yeah, we have a workaround. So you can follow the service there. As a church, it's very important to pray and to listen to God. And we have two times a week that we specifically as a church has uh, set apart. Uh, one is just before the service. Uh, from a quarter to two to a quarter to three, we pray together and lift up the service to God. That is our intercession. We have also intercession on Mondays from seven to eight, um, usually via Zoom. Uh, if you want to join, we invite you to join uh, for praying and listening. Um, the Zoom link you can get from uh, Rene or Derek Jan. Um, and if you can't find him, you can ask me. I can bring you in contact. And also very important thing of the church, and I think the second most important besides the Sunday services, uh, the small group. The small group is where you can share your faith with a smaller group of people in private, where you can ask faith questions, where you can um, carry each other's burden, where you can get to know each other better. Uh, church is also community, social community. It's the family of Christ. Um, so register online if you don't uh, don't go to, uh, if you haven't uh, joined the small group yet. There is one for students. Uh, there is one in Utrecht. There is one in Nieuwegein. There is one for uh, uh, ladies. There is um, a family small group um, and a host other ones. If you want to have more information, ask uh, Urbanus who is sitting over there. Maybe you can raise your hand for the people who don't know you, know you yet. Yes. And then very important save the dates get your phones out with your calendars write down the dates uh, of the events that um, are applicable to you yesterday there was the fourth encounter and that means that we will have a new series of encounters and people who haven't heard that before what is encounter encounter is a series of four teachings mostly on saturday of the basics of the teachings of uh, shofar and the first one is about life what does it mean to be a christian to know Christ, what, uh, what is forgiveness, what is baptism, what is the filling of the Holy Spirit. The second one, uh, and the first one is on the second of, uh, 22nd of April, and I will be helping teaching that together with Derek. Where is Derek sitting? Or is he not here? I saw him. Um, anyway, oh, he's sitting there, raising his hand. So he has all the answers for you on the encounters. Um, the 6th of May we have encounter two about what does it mean to be church? Is it just a building or is it something else? Or is it both? Um, then um, in interruption in encounters, a small group leaders training on the 13th of May is also Saturday. And then encounter three um, about destiny. What are you here for? Just to sit in church or something else? Um, and that is actually on the Friday evening and a Saturday. That is the longest of the three encounters. On the 17th of June, put in your um, agenda, is the worship in the park in Leipzig. It's not so far from here, it's uh, near the canal. And the great thing is, that is the longest day of the year. So it will be most likely light until 10.30 or something like that. It's the longest Saturday of the year. 
the 21st is the long, uh, longest day of the year. So um, that will be really great. We had it last year. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And on the 15th of July, just before the summer holidays, we have the fourth encounter, uh, freedom or deliverance. So, um, yeah, then the next slide is about the announcement for uh, encounter one, which we just did with the... Uh, with safe to date things, I, th I think I already announced it. One impo important thing: it starts at it's on, on a Saturday. It starts at 10 o'clock and it is until 4:30, and it is at Renee's and uh, Derek Jan's house. Um, and then after the service, maybe the most important thing is we have uh, coffee together, um, or tea, or anything else you want to drink. Um, I think it is very important to be uh, not only worship to be together, together, but also to have worship together, it, uh, to have community together, to know each other better. Um, uh, it is through that door, it points it out itself. So I hope to see you after the service. And then Barnish will give the offering message. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Banis and I'm going to share the offering message. The offering message is taken from Psalm chapter 54 verse 6 and it goes, I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name Lord for it is good. And it is taken from Psalm chapter 54 and the 54 is written by David. And when I was, today morning when I was uh, meditating on this scripture, if we look at the second verse of this chapter where David was praying to God and saying like, Oh God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. So he was praying and after three verse, he changed his prayer to praise. And he was saying like, I'll sacrifice a free will. Free will means there is no obligation. There is no force or nothing which pushes you. There is nothing that you have to give or there is nothing such like you give it out of your heart. It's a free will. And we are called to give. We are called to give in God's kingdom because he has given us something which is for free, which we haven't bought it or which we haven't earned it or we cannot earn it, that salvation. And we, we are called to give and that's why it is very important that when we give, we give it with a heart. It doesn't matter how much you give, it doesn't matter what you give, or it doesn't matter about your service, but it matters about the heart, with what heart you are bringing it to God. And that's, that's, that's something encouraging. And specifically, when I was meditating, the Holy Spirit put on my heart is like about praising. I will praise your name. We are to live a praise and worshipful life. And praise and worshipful is nothing that is limited to only church or spending time with God. That, that's not something. We praise and worship him through our whole life, living a life of obedience, living a life of according to God's will. And that's, that's something which was really encouraging for me. So I wanted to share it with you. So yeah, let's, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you that we can call unto you, Abba, Father, because you have saved us through your only Son, only begotten Son, Lord. We can come unto you, Lord. Thank you. We cannot repay for the salvation. We cannot earn it, Lord. But we can only worship you and praise you. Lord, through our life, through each and every breath that we have in our lungs, Lord, we can worship you, we can praise you, Lord. And we come up with an heart, Lord, with an open heart today, Lord, that we will give unto you, Lord, whatever we have. Because whatever we have, Lord, it's from you, O Lord. It's from you, Lord. We are just the steward. And we pray, Lord, that guide us so that we can offer for the advancement of your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, yes, we have a lot of ways to give offering. You can pay by cash or by pin card or QR code, or also you can do an online bank transfer to our church account, and you can find the account details in SOFAR Online, Puntanel. 
if you are a visitor please don't feel obliged to give an offering you please enjoy the service we have our uh, offering bag at the back so we call it townsal and uh, yeah after the service if you if, if the holy spirit is really putting it in your heart then you can yeah you can uh, put your offering over there thank you enjoy the service
With no melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my inner 
Okay. Heere God, wij brengen deze kinderen voor u en wij bidden voor uh, Annabel en Joshua en voor Gloria en voor Amira, Tiana en Luna, um, uh, Gloria, Bella en we vragen dat u met ons spreekt door uw woord en deur in geest. Amen. Thank you, Daniel and Lisa. Awesome. I'm going to leave the microphone in because I feel that God has been speaking to two people during worship, that God showed you something, a picture, a word, a color, or anything like that, which is for the whole congregation. So I'm going to give an opportunity first. If God has been speaking to you with worship just now, there's a certain thing which is coming up. If there's a word, if there's a picture or anything like that, then I'm inviting you to share it with us. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we could be singing, be a child of yours. And that we realize it, that we are a child of the creator of heaven and earth. He's above time. He hasn't got a beginning and an end. He's always there. He's a spirit who's everywhere. And Father, if we realize of who you are, and that we can call ourselves children of yours through Jesus Christ, then we become quiet, we become small. And those things where we are so proud of, of what we are and the titles we've got before our names and the degrees we've got behind our names, doesn't mean anything anymore. The most important thing is, I'm a child of the creator of heaven and earth. And with that, I know who I am and I know where I'm going to. And there's nothing more important in this life because all the other things have got an end. But the relationship with you, Father, is forever and ever. What a privilege that we can be children of yours through Jesus Christ and that we've got an appointment with you this afternoon, an encounter with you, and Father, I pray, Lord, that you're going to speak to us, that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to each and every one of us this afternoon over here. Also, those who are watching through Facebook Live now or maybe later on to YouTube, that you're going to speak into their hearts. But Father, I know then we've got to open up our hearts. And then we also have got to set aside the other things which are keeping our hearts at the moment busy. And Father, we know that the enemy also wants to destroy the relationship between us and you. But Father, we also have got authority in the name of Jesus Christ and I bind his powers in the name of Jesus that he's not going to distract us but that we can receive of what you want to share with us this afternoon. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Creator. Thank you, Abba. In Jesus' name, amen. good it's good to be back we were here three weeks ago in the last two weeks we were absent we were in South Africa and Daphne is going to show a picture now this was more or less the same time last week when you were having a sermon over here we were walking over there you can see the mountains at the back you can see the grass if we would have taken the picture the other way around you would have seen the sea it was beautiful but it's good to be back. It's good to be with our children and those are the grandchildren what we've got in South Africa and we really enjoyed the time. Those are our biological children. But the children what we've got over here are our spiritual children. And it's always good to be back. 
If we are on the other side, it's nice. It's enough meat, we enjoy it. If we are on this side, there's enough milk, we enjoy it and yogurt. But it's about the family, what we've got. And it's always special. And for me, just now as well, having a look at you and knowing that we are family, that we are brothers and sisters of each other, because we could be singing together, I'm a child of God. And that's so important. Going back to South Africa, coming back to the Netherlands, whichever way you want to see it, this the first time we used two stops, so which means we had three different planes which we had to get to our destination and three planes to get back. So at the total, we've been in six different planes in the last two weeks. But what's happening is, is that with each and every plane, the pilot has got to submit a flight plan of how he's going to fly. It's going to be approved, because otherwise you will have collisions up there, or the one plane comes in, like we know with cars as well, and the one wants to cross, and the other one wants to cross, and it's just a matter of who, which car is the biggest. Fortunately, each and every one has got to submit a plan, and they say, okay, here I am. This is where I'm going to this is the route where I'm going to fly. This is the height and the speed and all those type of things. And this is how it gets safely to the other side. I actually should ask Will because he has got the background of being a pilot and teaching and all that and he could have explained it into detail. But what I'm trying to get to is, is that in our lives we've got many times we've got a starting point, location, and with our smartphones we know what it means. And we've got a destiny. We punch it in. We say, okay, this is where we're going to. And then we press Google Maps or whatever phone you've got. And then there's a friendly lady. She's in America. And she knows exactly all the roads in the Netherlands. And she will tell you which road to take. She will even tell you or ask you, do you want to avoid highways? Do you want to take any ferries? Do you want to pay any toll fees or anything like that? And that's for me so awesome. I've got a little bit of a strange relationship with that lady. Sometimes I'm listening and sometimes I'm not listening to her. So, but that's Google Maps. But the same is happening in our spiritual life. We've got it that sometimes God is speaking to us and God is giving us a certain instruction of what we've got to do, which means we get a certain promise. But then we are waiting when it's going to come to pass. When is it going to happen? You can read it on the screen. You're between receiving the promise from God and seeing to come it to pass. You're in between. You're not quite sure. You're waiting for God. And in such a period, and hopefully all of you can relate to that, you actually want to put pressure on God. You want to say, come, tell me, what must I do? Please do not wait till the last day of the month before I've got to know if I've got to resign or not. Please tell me a little bit earlier. I don't want to wait till the last day. We basically want to tell God what he's got to do. We want to press him. But that's not correct. We can't do that. But such a period when we are having a calling from God and waiting before it is going to come to pass, they call it a desert. You're waiting. The perfect example, of course, was Moses with the Israelites in the desert. The promised land was there. It was promised. They knew where it was. They had the location. They had the destiny. And then they had the desert in between. We would have said that Google Maps, they should have used Google Maps. It would have been three, four days with a car. And if they walk, maybe three, four weeks, and then it would have been done. And it would have been at the place where they have got to be. But this is not what God's plan was. God wanted to spend time with them in the desert. God wanted to speak to them. God wanted to interact with them 
God wanted to make a covenant with them because that's what he made in the desert with them as well. And we can see that, that they were busy basically preparing themselves. Now maybe that some of us in those 40 years, we would have walked away and we would have said, sorry Lord, but 40 years in the desert, each and every day eating manna, Imagine yourself that you've got to eat each and every day a McDonald's hamburger for 40 years. You would have walked away from it after a few days. You would have said, thank you. The first two ones were fine, but then I'm going. That for me is really impressive that the Israelites were eating manna for 40 years. They were in the desert, but they were busy there because God was busy with them. We've got as church also such a situation. God has been speaking to us what Nijmegen is concerned. He said, you've got to plant a church over there. So we know that there is already a promise what we've got from God. But the coming to pass is not there yet at the moment. We're hearing things. There's something going to be birthed. Something has been birthed. It is going to happen soon but still we're waiting for it. We're still in that, call it a desert period. Rene and me had a few years back, it was in the end of September 2015, we had such a situation where on the last day of September, we had everything packed already because we thought we were going to move. Even the coffee machine was packed in. It was ready there, we were going to move. It was the last day of September because we heard from God that there was a certain church with a flat adjacent to it, that that's the place where God was going to give to us, that we were going to have church over there. And we were ready, and we waited, and we waited. We were in that desert, and we prayed. We were reading through the journals again of what is it what God promised to us. And we were praying, but nothing happened and nothing happened. Till at the last day, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I decided, okay, I've got to phone. So then I phoned up those people from that church and I spoke to them and they very clearly said, no, they're not interested in either renting or doing anything whatsoever. So basically means we were not going to move. So then I had to phone the landlord again and say, please, we've been in your place now for three months. Can we extend it another month and then we stayed another four months at the same place. But there we were, and then we were looking at each other and said, what was wrong? Didn't we hear correctly from God? Or what is actually the problem over here? And then also we spoke to other people about it. And it's sometimes difficult to, to really explain it. But most probably is that God has been speaking to them. But they didn't listen to what God was telling them to do. Because you need two parties. The one has got to, is receiving it and is going then to the other side. And then the others must agree with it that you can move in and that you can start an agreement. So it could be that they heard from God but that they were not obedient. And it could also be that they didn't listen that they didn't seek God's face, that they didn't go on their knees on a regular basis and say, Lord, what is it? What do you want to share with us? Is there any strategy what you've got for the next month, two months, or whatever the case may be? Anyway, we stayed on the place where we were at that moment, and um, then f miraculously, we got the place where we are now at the moment, and most of you have already been there. We had la yesterday, I think, something like 15 people again doing the encounter for. So yes, we are now at the place where God wants us to be. But those deserts, they are purifying you and they are humbling you. Because you really have got to continuously look at yourself and you've got to Humble yourself and not say, okay, I will do it. Move a little bit, God, I will do it. No, we've got to wait and we've got to wait for God. 
I hope that the show for Nijmegen is not going to take 40 years. It will be a little bit too long. Then I think the children of Banish will preach over there. Then, yeah. Yesterday evening, afternoon, after the encounter, four people left our house. I also felt I'm a little bit in a desert. I know I've got to preach. I'm on a schedule. God gave the dates what each and every one has got to preach. And yes, you can grab a, 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 a sermon from somebody else. You can take a book or you can, t whatever it is, and you can write a sermon. I don't think it is too difficult with that. But to really sit down and to become quiet and to ask and to say, Lord, what is it? What is the message what you've got for the congregation? What is it what you want to bring to the congregation? Is a little bit of a different story. And again, we've got the one place behind my desk and where I'm standing now and in between, how exactly must I get there? What must I do? And then I prayed. And then I asked, I said, Lord, what is it what you want to say to us tomorrow? And then the Lord said, come, come closer to me. And then he also said, take time and be at the right place and the right, have the right attitude. Then I asked, I said, Lord, is it for me? Is it for the congregation? And then he said, it's for each and every one of you tomorrow. That you're going to come closer to me, that you're going to take time to come close to me, that you're going to be at the right place and that you're going to have the right attitude. The coming closer we can read in James 4 verses 8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now this is one which we hear quite often. But the most important one is actually the next sentence. Cleanse your hands, your sinners, and purify your hearts, your double-minded. That drawing to near means that we've got to approach God. It means that we have got to go to God. We have got to approach Him. He's available. He's always available. It's not a matter of that He's not available, but He's always available. He wants us that we should draw near to Him, and then He will draw near to us. Cleanse your hands, your sinners. Now, these type of things of saying, cleanse your hands, your sinners, and purify your hearts, your double-minded, are not nice words to hear. And then you say, Lord, are you saying to me, I'm a sinner? Yes, I am a sinner. I know that. But God is saying to each and every one, cleanse your hands, your sinners, which means we've got to repent of what we are doing wrong. And purify your hearts, your double-minded. If we take a look at the purifying, the word, what it means, it's coming out of the Greek. It means that it, you should make it clean, that you should sanctify it, that you should purify it. Purify your hearts, your double-minded. Now the word heart, <clears throat> you've got three different explanations for it. First, it's the physical heart, the heart which we can feel beating when we put our hands on our breast. But it's also the heart which is the soul. And those with encounter four yesterday, they will know that the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. That's also our heart. And then it's also the middle, the heart, the center. But if we're coming then to that, that soul, which has got the mind, the will, and the emotions, then it links to what it's, the next part is, you are double-minded. You've got to purify your mind, you double-minded. You've got to purify your will, you double-minded. You've got to purify your emotions, you double-minded. You've got to purify it. You make sure that you do it the right way. And if we are busy with that, if we are cleansing our hands, and if we are purifying our hearts, we are basically busy with a process. We are busy with doing something. It is a road, it's a progress, it's the way. This is why God also gave me the title that it has got to be the way. This is what we've got to do. This is the correct way. The, the way was also the name of the first church. 
in Acts 9 verses 1 to 2, we can read it. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murders, murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him, from the high priest, to the synagogues, synagogues of Damascus, so that he, if he found any who were of the way, who were on that way, who were busy with cleansing their hands and purifying their hearts, were men or women, that he bring them bound to Jerusalem. So the church had the name, the way. Later on, it moved, it became that they were called Christians, but that we only read in uh, Acts 11, where it says, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So the first church name was the way. And it's coming from Jesus, what Jesus say, said in, in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So he is the way. He is the only road. He's the only place where we can progress through. And then the way which is mentioned in Acts and in the way which is mentioned by Jesus is exactly the same. It's a road. It is a process. And figuratively, it also means it's, it's a means, it's a mode, it's a way of doing it that you are continuously busy with cleansing your hands and purifying your hearts. Isaiah was also talking about way. He was talking actually about a highway. And I would like to read chapter 35 with us. It's a little bit of a long one, so we will be finished before dark. Don't worry about it. But in 34, it's talking about God's destructive just judgment about the Edomites, the enemies of God and the people. And then in 35, he's talking about changes which are taking place because God's presence is over there. And it starts in verse 1. The wilderness and the wastelands shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. So there's a change over there. And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice. Even with joy and singing, the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellence of the Lord. And then it carries on and it says there's going to be miracles which are going to be seen in verse 3. Strengthen the weak hands and make, the feeble knee, and make firm the feeble knees. And then it also says that the Lord is going to come back one day and he's going to repay the world for its evil. But he's also going to give rewards to those who are faithful to him. Verse 4. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. And then the next verses is also quoted by Jesus in Matthew and in Luke. That signs and wonders are happening and which we are still seeing happening because they are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And a lamb shall leap like a deer. The lamb shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb will sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the deserts. There's really going to be a change when the presence of God is going to come. If we allow the presence of God into our lives, the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land spring of water, springs of water, the inhabitation of jackals where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. There's a clear path for those who follow God in purity and in holiness. And then we can see in verse 8 where it's talking about that highway. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass on it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. That is the way what God wants us that we should be. That is the road, the progress that we should make, that we should be on a highway of holiness. The Hebrew word for highway is derek. Sorry about it, derek, but, it's the, 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 but it says it's a road and it's a, a way of life. It's, it's a mode. How are you living? And it also means that there's it's a path, it's a journey. You're busy with something. It's not something with static. 
that you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm over here now and I'm waiting. But you're busy with the process. You're busy with the road. You're on the highway of holiness. And then holiness also means that you're consecrated, that you're set apart, that you're dedicated. And that's so awesome that if, where it says then, the unclean shall not pass over it. The highway of holiness has been set apart for the children of God, that we can walk on it and that we can progress in our lives. The highway of holiness, we also can call it, call it the sanctification, the sanctification process, that we are busy with that, that we are uh, repenting our sins and that we are also then changing our minds, that we are continuously busy with God's, with God's kingdom. Verse 9, no lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go on up to it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And then there's a, such a joy with the people when they are experiencing it and at seeing it, and that we can read in 10. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing and everlasting joy over the, on their hands. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The desert changed with the presence of God. And our lives are also changing with the presence of God. When we are going to walk that highway, when we're going to walk that highway of holiness. A little bit further on in Isaiah, he's talking about it again. He's saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness. This is the one which John the Baptist also used in, when he started preaching. Prepare the way of the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God, a highway of holiness. And we are invited to that highway of holiness. We are invited to walk that highway of holiness. And sometimes we, we say, okay, we're fine where we are. We're not that much worried. We do not want to spend too much time on it. But the message is very clear what God is saying. He wants us that we should repent. And he wants us that we are going to change our mind, that we're going to be focused on him. To finish off, I want to read out of Jeremiah 18, verses 15, who's also talking about a highway. Because my people have forgotten me. They have burnt incense to worthless idols. They were sinning there. And they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways. They were stumbling in their ways because they were focused on other stuff. They were not focused on God's things. They had to purify their hearts from the ancient path to walk in the pathways and not on a highway. It's that warning again from God. What he's saying is we've got to cleanse our hands, uh, we as sinners, and we've got to purify our hearts because it's so easy that we are double-minded. And God is inviting us that we should walk that highway of holiness. We're now going to have communion. But before I'm going to start with it, I'm just going to ask a very open question. If you're here today, and if you've never started walking on that highway of holiness, you never started the relationship with God, You've never accepted Jesus Christ as your, holy, as your Savior, and you've never invited the Holy Spirit into your life as a helper. You've never done it publicly. You feel God is speaking to you this afternoon, and you would like to, to make that decision this afternoon, then I'm inviting you that you can raise your hand. For the communion, I would like to read out of Mark 14, verses 22 and 24, where Jesus is instituting the communion. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And then he said to them, This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for many covenant but the covenant has got two parties 
God is on the one side and we are on the other side. And it's so many times that we're taking communion that we say it's reminding us of what God has been doing. But it's actually reminding also of that covenant, that covenant what God has got with us. And our sight to that covenant is that we've got to do, that we've got to cleanse our hands and that we've got to purify our hearts. That's our part, what we bring to that covenant. God has already brought Jesus. That's what we are being reminded of. But we're also being reminded of that covenant that we've got to cleanse our hands and that we've got to purify our hearts. I'm going to invite you then just now that you're going to come and take the communion and you can do it on your own. You can sit with somebody else who is with you today and you can pray. But please use that time where you're going to say, Lord, I know there's sin in my life. I've got to bring it to you and I've got to ask for forgiveness because this is where Jesus died for at the cross. We're going to celebrate it this coming Friday, Good Friday, where Jesus died at the cross. But also that we can say, I want to purify my heart. Those things which I allow into my life, which are not giving the right type of information to me. And you know that. It is whatever you're watching on YouTube, what you're listening to, if it's ungodly, you've got to purify your heart. You've got to make sure that you're listening and watching the stuff which is constructive, which is about God. That you're going to take it, sit somewhere. If you want to, you can pray along with somebody else. It's, it's, ask what God is leading you. But please make time for that relationship with God because it's just confirming again that you are walking on that highway of holiness, that you are busy with it. This is not a sermon that you say, okay, wow, I was motivated and I'm going to save the world. But it's about a personal relationship with God. And if we do not take it serious, then it's just going to be something which is flowing away again. Jesus died at the cross for our sins. And we can go and we can repent. And God has already said, it's forgiven. And that purify our hearts, you double-minded, that we are going to think. And the decisions what we take and the emotions what we're going to show according to God's will. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that awesome present what you've given to us that we can be with you in heaven forever and ever that Jesus died for our sins that we do not have to die for our sins ourselves Jesus has done it for us but father it's also that you're asking that we should bring our sins and that we should repent and that if we are repenting that we're also not going to just follow it again tomorrow but that we're really going to put an effort that we're going to stay away from it. That we're also going to purify our hearts. That we're going to have a look at what we're listening to. What are we listening to? And what are we watching? Where are we spending time with? And are we making time with you, Father? And so I pray, Lord, that as we are going to take the communion in our own time, that through the Holy Spirit that you will speak to each and every one of us that we can be confirmed again that we are walking on that highway of holiness, that we are approaching you, that we are continuously busy with that progress. Thank you, Father, for your love and for your grace. And thank you for the covenant that we've got through Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to, there's communion on both sides. I'm going to ask them uh, that it, from the front that you just come and that you're going to take communion, take a seat, go and sit wherever you want to sit. I'm not quite sure, Mahesh, that if you've got some music what you can play in the meantime, then I'm going to ask the band as well to take part of the communion. And once you finish, that you can uh, still play 
How many songs? One song, okay. If it is when we're going to sing that last song and if you need any prayer, please come. There will be of the small group leaders at the two different stations over there that you can go to them, that you can go for prayer over there. If you feel that you need prayer, anything what it is, if there's something what you, if you need healing, um, if there's somebody else in your family who's sick where you want to stand proxy for, please come and that we can pray for you. It's going to be on the screen again, that James 4, verses 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, your sinners, and purify your hearts, your double-minded. Then I wrote at the bottom over there, walk the highway of holiness. Walk that sanctification process. That is what brings us closer to God. Thank you. Um, I said to Darkin just now, um, he asked if anyone had a word, and I definitely didn't have. And then when he started praying before, the, uh, before he started preaching, God showed me a picture of a train. And it was a straight track, but you couldn't see really where it's going. And it was as if God invited us all, get on the train. And I saw many people didn't want to, because um, you're not in control. You, you go on the destiny of this train. And, and I feel it's what God wants us to, to let go of our control and just say, okay, Lord, here I am. I'll go with you. Um, I'll quickly pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this picture. Thank you that all of us will say yes to your invitation. You're the best, Father. You, you want us to have a relationship with you. Thank you that our ears and our hearts will be open. Thank you that we will have the right attitude, Lord. Thank you that we will position ourselves in the right place. And thank you that you are so faithful and that you love us so much. And thank you, although we cannot see where it's going, that we know it will be good. It will be the best because it's with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone else who got a picture or a word?
thank you that you're with us. Thank you that you're with us in this service. Glorify your name, Lord. I ask that you fill us with your glory, Lord. That we will walk in your righteousness and on your highway, Lord. I pray that in your name. of your weeks. We are going to worship a little bit more. Feel free.